death is news. Obituaries are read more closely by more people than any other part of the paper. I believe this 100%. When my mother is visiting me and away from her hometown newspaper for a few days, she will always ask me to check the newspaper website. She isn't asking for sports scores or city council news. She wants to know who died. Similarly, pretty much the only time I check that website when my mom isn't around is when I want to read someone's obituary. Obituaries tell stories, not just how someone died and who they were related to, but a good obituary is a snapshot of a person's life. Now there's two different types of stories that you can write about a person's death, the death notice and the obituary. Now the death notice is just the basic facts, who died, when and where, maybe why the person died, and details about any memorial service. What we're talking here is about the obituary, a longer announcement that shares more history and details about the person that died. I'll go through a quick rundown of what every obituary should include. Use the deceased's full name, including a middle name and any well-known nicknames. Find a phrase that best summarizes the person, possibly their occupation or something else that the person was well known for. Age, unless specifically asked to omit it by the family. Day and place of death. Give the day of the week. The time is generally irrelevant. If the person died out of town, give the name of the city. If the person died in town, state the location, such as Durham Regional Hospital or at her residence. Give the cause of death, but spare the grisly details. After a long battle with ovarian cancer or from pneumonia is fine. Birth date and place. You'll wanna share the person's background, such as education, honors and career achievements, and any military service. Name survivors in the immediate family, spouse, children, parents, and siblings. I have 30 first cousins on my mother's side, so several nieces and nephews would be sufficient for her obituary. Some obituaries also list who preceded the person in death. Again, typically immediate family only. Finally, include the funeral service and burial information, including any visitation. Obituaries generally follow the same formula, but they don't need to all sound boring. Here's a paid death notice of James Wilson, who died in September 2017, as printed in the Goldsboro News Argus. It includes all the basic information from our checklist, but since it was written by his son, who's also a journalism professor, it sounds a bit more interesting. Kick the tires and light the fires. Retired United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel James Wendell Wilson is on his way to heaven. The quote, short, smiling Texan, end quote, died peacefully with his family beside him on September 5th, 2017, after giving Alzheimer's and complications a run for their money. Jim had a lifetime love affair with football, the Westlake Chaps, Sousa Marches, Dachshunds, the Aggies, Jelly Beans, and Catching Bass. Bass. He excelled at keeping the lawn green and outsmarting the weeds, telling corny dad jokes, and singing silly songs. But if you asked, he would rather be fishing or watching football. Reflecting on his full life, he was known by many names. Mr. Wilson, Jim, James, Uncle Jimmy, Colonel, Sir, and Daddy. I did cut a few paragraphs out in the middle, but you can keep reading for information about his survivors and funeral arrangements and see how that information is presented. If a person that died is famous, be it worldwide or just in the community, there might be a news obituary instead of a traditional obituary. Now there also might be a death notice or standard obituary still on the obituary page with reference to the news obituary elsewhere. Now, the lead of a news obituary should emphasize the person's significance. What makes this person stand out from all the other people that died? 
Was he the high school valedictorian killed in a car accident the night before graduation? Was she a beloved pediatrician who treated thousands of children during her decades in practice? The lead should include the person's name, major accomplishments or occupation, and the day, location, and cause of death. Now, sometimes the cause of death is omitted, such as in cases of death by suicide. Some diseases also carry a stigma, regardless of how the disease was contracted. So it might be better to say died after a long illness than died from complication from AIDS. Now, if the person died a natural death at a ripe old age, focus on the person's history. If the death was unusual, such as in an accident or as the result of a crime, those circum circumstances should be included before the person's background information. Finally, as with any news story, you should try to get quotes from the deceased's family, friends, or co-workers. For the high school valedictorian, talk to some of his teachers and classmates. For the pediatrician, find some patients or fellow doctors and nurses. Don't be shy about talking to the deceased's family, but do be sensitive. People are rarely too upset to talk, especially about someone they love. Here's a good example of a news obituary detailing the death of longtime U.S. Steel executive Earl W. Malick, as published in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. The obituary starts with how he turned a rocky relationship with a local environmentalist and city council member into a sort of friendship. It includes quotes from two of his three children, along with pertinent details about Malick's life. You might also choose to go with a feature obituary rather than a news obituary. Like any feature story, the feature obituary has a looser and friendlier style than you'd find in a typical news piece. The feature obituary creates an illusion of intimacy. It lets you in on the person's life in a quasi voyeuristic way. The feature obituary is different than other stories though, in that it often omits attributions. Reading according to their daughter, or her wife said, after every detail would kind of ruin that illusion of intimacy. The reporter still has to be very careful to ensure that the details are true, often verifying them through multiple accounts. Here is more of a feature obituary about actress Carrie Fisher. As published in Vanity Fair, it has a much looser style. Using the headline, Carrie Fisher had one request for her obituary and the deck quotes her book, Wishful Drinking, in which she wrote, I want it to be reported that I drowned in moonlight, strangled by my own bra. The lead paragraph includes information about when and how Fisher died, but continues with the looser, friendlier style from the headline. 